Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Ominous and today I will review the fourth studio album by the uh, indie rock band Death, Death Cap for Cutie, uh, which is arguably one of the weirdest names I've ever heard, probably. Um, and how am I gonna say this name? Transatlanticism, which is arguably one of the weirdest titled albums as well. So I can see why this album fits De Death Cap for Cutie the best because it's such a weird ass title, but I mean. It's um, it's a modern classic, I suppose, a modern indie rock classic. Um, by the way, you know what instantly catches my uh, my eye was, of course, the cover with the the crow, with the very nice beige uh, background, uh, with you know the crow covered up in rope, red rope, I suppose. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe you know present strings. I don't, I don't exactly know what it means, but red was the perfect color to choose, you know, red, black and beige really go well together. I really like this combination of colors. So this might be one of my favorite album covers out there. It's a really beautiful album cover, I really love it. It's pure indie rock according to Wikipedia, so there's that. Uh, we have 11 tracks. Um, 44 minutes of music, although my Spotify said 45 minutes, but whatever. We got the first song, which is The New Year, which is very appropriately since, you know, I'm a week, we, we are a week balls deep in this, uh, in this fucking, what's the thing? A balls deep in this fucking year. Although when this comes out, it's probably like two weeks later, but whatever. Uh, a very appropriate song to, uh, to start things off. Uh, although this was released in October, but whatever. <laughs> they probably recorded it in the new year, that's probably what they mean. I don't, I don't know exactly. This this was written by the whole band, I'm pretty sure. Or no, all, all lyrics written by Ben Gibbard, who's probably like the, the nerdy, uh, you know, gl uh, blonde glasses uh, kind of chubby guy, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's not that chubby, but a little bit. You know, it's kind of like a cute, nerdy kind of type. Um, yeah, so this was a very great opening song, very appropriately for the for the album and pretty solid overall. And then we get Lightness, which is a three and a half minute kind of like metal slow jam, which was really enjoyable. Uh, just really atmospheric, really um, you know soft spoken and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, just an overall very enjoyable piece. Definitely like dim down a light or something, put on a candle if this uh, comes on. You know the lightness, so it should indicate that. Then we get the title and registration. Um, yeah, this is actually one of the singles, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and the new year also was, but it wasn't like clickable, so there we go. Actually, like the big hits are not actually singles, I'm pretty sure. Or, you know, the the more fan favorites, I suppose. The, the fan favorites are not singles, which is pretty strange. Or, you know, they're too long for the radio, I suppose. Um, yeah, title and registration, which is a pr pretty funny song. Uh, it is clickable, but it's not. Oh yeah, it's actually the third single. Uh, third single of the record. Uh, it's a pretty funny song. Uh, the lyrics are pretty funny. The title is pretty funny. Uh, title and registration. Well, you know, it's not that funny, but you know, when you think about it, you know, it's it's kind of funny in that context. If like literally like an officer comes to you and says that to you, yeah, he's just doing his job, but to actually hear it on the record is pretty funny, so there we go. Pretty catchy tune, uh, lyrics are funny, you know, the song is kind of like, um, it kind of pokes fun at, at itself, indicating that it's not just a, a very serious indie rock record, it also can make a joke here and there, so I like that. And like I said, very catchy, that's why it's the third single. Now we have Expo 86, which is kind of like, um, Kind of like an underwhelming song because I didn't. This song didn't really catch my ear. I actually can't even remember that I saw the title, so I probably like uh, overheard it or something or didn't read it when I was listening to this. So this song kind of uh, uh, went over my head. It was a pretty underwhelming song. I can't really say anything about the song because I don't know. I haven't really listened to it honestly. I have heard it, but it did, just didn't really catch me. So yeah, it's probably my least favorite of the album. It you know it's also it's arguably one of the least 
talked about songs on on this album because it's between the two singles. So there we go. So it's definitely a uh, black sheep of the of the of the horde, and you know not the good kind of black sheep. So there we go. Then we have the sound of settling, which is a very catchy track. Uh, the band kind of combines more conventional uh, classic rock guitar riffs with some more kind of like uh, metal slow jams, perfectly blending the two with each other and arguably creating just a very appropriately uh, radio rock uh, song. Very appropriately, the song is four minutes long, so, or actually it's two minutes long. Uh, this, this, yeah, the song is two minutes long. Um, yeah, and it was a very like brief and catchy song to listen to and just a very uh, short but pleasant experience. Now we have Tiny Vessels, which is the uh, the centerpiece of the record. Uh, it's, it is four minutes long. This song is actually four minutes long. Uh, yeah, pretty solid song. Um, yeah, there are some very conventional moments on this track. I like the title Tiny Vessels. It's, it's, a, it's a good title, I would say. Um, yeah, you know, just a very enjoyable track. It's also co-written by Harmer, I believe, or it's uh, musically composed by Harmer. Co uh, co-written by Harmer, co-performed as I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah, this is a very solid track, although this song also is kind of overshadowed since it is between the, the single and arg and pretty much the biggest fan favorite of, uh, of the band's discography, which is the title track, Transatlanticism, like that fucking title mate, kill me. I don't know what that means, if it, if it actually means something then let me know. I've actually no idea who requested this, like some weird guy with a weird profile picture, but whatever. Like a new fan. Welcome, but you're, you have a weird ass fucking profile picture. I will say that. But I believe it's a parody, so whatever. Um, so this track is almost 8 minutes long, and I'm pretty sure this is the longest Death Cap for Cutie song ever. Uh, this gets a lot of like, uh, for me at least, it gets a lot of Stephen Wilson vibes out of me. Like the whole... A composing element and the whole kind of like slow mellow moments the atmosphere the singing is very tender and very um just very melancholic i would say just very calm and depressing to, to listen to in a good way so this is definitely my all-time favorite death cup for cutie song because it's just a lengthy song it's almost an epic well i would say it's an epic because it's it's borderline eight minutes long and even then it's an epic track so fuck you uh, so this is just a very awesome track. I can, um, yeah, it definitely sounds like I have to say like a kind of Pink Floyd kind of Stephen Wilson vibe. I have to say, definitely St Stephen Wilson the most because that might be an influence uh, for Death Cab. I'm not pretty sure. I'm not really sure, but and I also had in my head like one other artist that they sound like, but I forgot the t I forgot the name. Like another artist that I really like, but. I don't really think about it at the moment, but definitely Steven Wilson influence, I would say. Uh, but of course, you're only gonna get plus points, um, you know, from my perspective. You know, if I were the man, and I would like slam your ass and give you a five or something. Borderline mediocrity. But uh, you know, this song is anything but. So there we go. Then we get passenger seat. This was a very great song in my opinion. Uh, Three minutes and forty-one seconds. Uh, yeah, the, you know, if transept lyticism was the, you know, the arriving somewhere, um, but not here kind of song, you know, pork country centered, then passenger seat would be the drive home of Def Cab. Although, yeah, this all this album actually preceded both of those songs, so that's kind of a, I'm I'm kind of contradicting myself, but you, but you know, pre. You know, poor, I'm pretty sure Pork Country preceded this band, but I, I don't fucking know, like I'm just fanboying over here. But uh, th this song sounds very Drive Home inspired, you know, by Steven Wilson. And you know, this song came out a decade later, so what the fuck am I saying? But it, it sounds really like that song, honestly, and I really, like, that's one of my all-time favorite songs. And Passenger Seat might be, it might, yeah, it might be my second favorite song of the album because it just sounds very chill and mellow and just chill to the bone. This is a very great track, a lot of great atmosphere to it, arguably the greatest atmosphere on the record yet, which you're probably not gonna top, but you know, you can always try. Then we get Death of an Inferior Decorator, which is a very uh, interesting title, I have to say. 
Uh, it's a it's a very kind of like avant-garde kind of track. It's it still is a pretty you know it still is a kind of indie rock track of course, but it has some avant-garde influences in there a little bit, which I really like. I really like that the band blends those things in to experiment with different sounds. So that is definitely a good part on their part. So there we go. There's definitely a good sound on their part. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, then we have we looks like giant, and I think this is kind of like the band indicating that uh, we're looking like a ri uh, like a rich, wealthy, big rock and roll band or something. But we're actually kind of like an obscure indie rock band. I I think that's what they're trying to say. Here. I'm not sure. It's five and a half five and a half minutes long, and it's the second longest song after the title track, which I'm not gonna say again because. It's it's just a dumb ass title. It's not it's not dumb, but it's such an overly complicated title. Like what the fuck? Um, yeah, very uh, well relatable for them kind of song. They fucking wrote it. So there we go. It's actually written by the whole band actually by uh, by Gibbard, Harmer, McGurr, and Walla. Great names. Uh, so this was a very um, yeah, it was just a very appropriate song for the for the band. Very relatable for their part, but you know. Nobody else could relate to it since nobody Or well, yeah, actually quite some people could relate to it because m most bands are pretty indie like indie obscure and You know some bands actually look like big giant rock bands. We look like giants, but you know in reality you're you're just a Small shitty band playing pubs in a local bar or something like fuck no So if you can't relate with the song then uh, yeah You're probably like the, the 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 next Led Zeppelin, you're the next Pink Floyd or whatever, or the next Queen, you know. Um, and then we have the last track, which is a lack of color. And actually, when I heard this track, I was just in trance. I was just like enjoying myself, uh, just very like laid back, just doing my thing. And I was I was like really enjoying myself with this track. Like it was, it, it is three and a half minutes long. It's just kind of like a nice guitar riff in the back. It's just, you know, uh, Gibbard's vocals are just very soothing and relaxing to listen to. It was just a very relaxing track to listen to in general. So I, I really, really like this. Uh, and when it ended, I was like, oh shit, this album is over. I was like really enjoying myself. So that's always a good, uh, you know, a good thing to notice about a record that, you know, it ends and you want more. So. That's a good thing with this record. Uh, yeah, the only really flaws that I have with this record is that Expo 86 is not really a good song. Um, Death of an Inferior dec uh, Decorator and We Look Like Giants are not. They are not terrible tracks, but they are kind of like, you know, uh, they are still good though, but they're not as good as the other track. The other tracks are great, and Expo 86 is my least favorite track, so. But outside of that, I really love every song on this record, so it's a near flawless record for me, so I'm gonna give it a 9.4. I was gonna give it an 8.9, but I really, really like this album, so um, yeah, that is Death Care for Cutie. I actually thought that this record was requested way earlier, but I might have forgot it, since my fans are fan of Death Care for Cutie, if that makes sense. Personally, I, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking to myself, they sound like Steven Wilson and Weezer. Like, yeah, there are kind of like some Weezer vibes on in this band. Like uh, the nerdy vibe, the indie rock kind of, uh, you know, influence. Although Weezer isn't indie rock, but they kind of sound like indie rock nowadays, I would say. A little bit, but you know, they're more of an alternative rock power pop band, pop punk, if you want to college you know a little bit there they have a little bit of everything about that so there we go um yeah so they kind of bring like two very like uh opposite spectrums of each other you know stephen wilson and weezer like two acts that would never collide i would say collide on this you know if if those two artists would make a baby you would have death cap i would say yeah, that would actually not be a bad comparison. So that is, in my opinion, what they sound like. They, they, they sound like a Weezer, Stephen Wilson fusion to me. So there we go. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty fucking good. So there we go. Uh, let me know what you think about the record. I really like it. Let me, yeah, and what I just said. 
Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments why. Uh, like on the subscribe to the channel on the Fitness Lives one. Le uh, let me know what you think about the record. Like I said already like 20 times in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.